In this video, we're discussing some exciting Kansas City developments in the Plaza, 18th and Vine, and a proposed development that has the potential to reshape Kansas City as we know it. Stay tuned. What's up? I'm Kyle, a local realtor, and I for one am excited for many of the changes taking place here in Kansas City, but I know there are mixed feelings about these developments. So drop a comment below. Are you excited or concerned? And before we jump into it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as we're putting out new content every single week about eating, sleeping, living, and playing right here in Kansas City. First up, let's talk about the historic 18th and Vine District, which is currently undergoing some exciting new developments. One of the pioneer projects sparking this new development is 2000 Vine. The project is centered around the renovation of two 150-year-old historic buildings, which happen to be the original public works buildings in Kansas City, and they've been transformed into a blend of office space, retail, a restaurant, and the city's first black-owned microbrewery. The project, which began back in 2018, is nearing its completion with Vine Street Brewing set to open this summer. Some of the other businesses set to debut in the space include a tattoo shop, an art gallery, and a culinary workforce program called The Prospect. Kansas City recently approved a $950,000 grant to complete the outdoor patio between the two buildings, which will overlook the Kansas City skyline. Now, a website that we get a lot of our information from is City Scene KC. So definitely got to give them a shout out because they're doing amazing things and keeping track of all of these developments that are taking place here in Kansas City. So the 2000 Vine project nears completion, brewery to open soon. And I just wanted to show you some of the interior photos of this historic building because it is beautiful. In fact, you can see here the patio. If we go to the street view, you've probably driven by these buildings before. And right here is where you're gonna have your patio between the two buildings. Another high profile project in the 18th and Vine District is the Negro Leagues Museum expansion. The museum recently launched its $25 million fundraising campaign, which aims to create a state of the art facility that showcases the stories of the unsung heroes of the Negro Leagues. There had been rumors about relocating the museum to a more high profile area. However, museum president Bob Kendrick put those rumors to rest, expressing his desire to remain in the 18th and Vine district. Several other projects are currently underway, including the 1-9 Vine project, which is an 80 unit apartment building providing market rate and affordable units, as well as a $20 million renovation and conversion that'll transform the historic Atuck School into an art center with 43 art studios and seven galleries and event spaces. In total, over $150 million is being poured into Kansas City's cultural hub, and I think it's about time that the 18th and Vine District gets the recognition that it deserves. Now let's discuss a couple of the projects coming soon to the Country Club Plaza, including Cocina 47, which is a new restaurant development project located at 47th in Pennsylvania. The project has had its fair share of controversy, including a fight to preserve the 7th Church of Christ building, which is now set to be demolished early next year. The three-level building will feature three high-end restaurants, each occupying a floor, and one of Drake Development's proposals, which included an additional three stories for condos, was denied due to it being too tall for the current zoning. And the new design will have each floor set back from 47th Street and include terraces on each level. These changes were enough to satisfy the City Council Neighborhood Committee, winning full support at the end of May. But doesn't the plaza already have enough dining options perhaps but right next door we have the puttery which is set to open this year it's an immersive miniature golf concept that combines cocktails a chef's inspired menu with the classic game of putt putt the dallas-based franchise is set to take over the lower level of the jack henry building and will offer uniquely themed nine hole courses kansas city is the 10th location selected for the franchise along with charlotte pittsburgh and several locations throughout texas it's projected to generate between seven and eleven million dollars in annual revenue just check out some of these themed courses which include an optical illusion course a grand a library and a ski lodge i think the puttery brings a great option for entertainment which personally i believe is lacking currently in the country club plaza another project that i'm absolutely 
pumped about and hope happens is the proposed Green Line trail loop around downtown Kansas City. The project, estimated to cost $80 million, aims to seek federal funding and was initially pitched three years ago by developer Vince Bryant. The trail would encircle downtown, stretching from the Kansas City terminal tracks in the south, east along the Paseo, north along the riverfront, and finally west along Beardsley Road. The project draws inspiration from other cities that have repurposed old rail corridors for recreational use, such as the High Line in New York, the Bentway in Toronto, and the Atlanta Beltline, which has transformed 22 miles of former rail corridor into bike and walking trails, attracting 2 million visitors annually and generating 4.1 billion in redevelopment along its route. So this is an interactive map for the Beltline at Atlanta. Now the proposed trail for Kansas City is a 10 mile loop, whereas the one in Atlanta is 22 miles. But if you just take a look at what some of this looks like, it's really like an art walk mixed with a pedestrian trail that allows you to interconnect different neighborhoods and parts of the city. And I think it's a really unique and cool thing for Kansas City to potentially do in our downtown area, which would connect the Crossroads District, River Market, and Berkeley Riverfront Park, 18th and Vine, and then on the Southern Anchor, you'd have Union Station and Crown Center. So again, I think these are really awesome ideas that Kansas City is considering to make the downtown area more walkable and pedestrian friendly. The primary goals of the Green Line project are to create a network of trails for recreation, transit, and neighborhood reconnection while also reducing emissions through walkability, you know, scooters, biking, that sort of thing. And I think it's a great idea for making Kansas City more walkable and interconnecting different parts of downtown in a very unique way. But what do you think? A couple other developments that have been proposed, but may or may not happen include a 5,000 seat UMKC arena at the Southern Anchor for the streetcar extension. The university has asked developers to submit proposals that would transform the five acres of land at 51st and Brookside Boulevard into an arena for their sports programs, but could also be used for events and concerts. Another one that I find interesting is a 300 unit apartment project in Waldo and the place where the well is located at 75th and Warnell. The proposal would allow the well to reopen on the ground level and potentially entice the streetcar to be extended even further south. Now, I know there are mixed feelings around some of these developments, but I think it's truly an exciting time for Kansas City. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell, my team and I would love to assist you. So shoot us an email at info at And until next time.